This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hyra Canucks and I am wearing red on purpose because today we'll be taking a look at an overview of AMD's new driver software that uh, promises better user experience, more stability in the future and everything in between sort of improved. And they've added several cool infrastructure additions within the software. So here's everything you need to know about AMD Crimson software. So the first uh, feature is Low Frame Rate Compensator or LFC. AMD is adding this feature to compensate for judder and tearing if your frame rate goes below the minimum refresh rate of a FreeSync monitor. So some of the first uh, generation FreeSync monitors had a minimum refresh rate of 40 hertz with FreeSync enabled. And therefore, if your frame rate dropped below 40 FPS in game, you encounter stuttering and just unplayable uh, non-fluid motion. So LFC will try to compensate for that uh, with this new panels that have a lower refresh rate, not at 40, but now will be at 30 hertz, which means that the LFC will adapt the GPU output versus refresh rate of a monitor. So you have more fluid experience, even if you drop below the minimum refresh rate of a FreeSync panel. So the next feature is frame pacing. In Crossfire, micro stutter was a very common issue in DX9 games, but now with Crimson, that is all solved and you should experience uh, much more fluid gameplay with DX9 uh, titles with Crossfire. So now let's talk UI, see how pretty this new software is from AMD and uh, see also if there is any performance benefits uh, with AMD Crimson. And so first you can see that AMD has done a fantastic job with the driver user interface. Um, it's easy to navigate, it's very fast and provides a solid foundation for all user interactions with the drivers. So the first gaming tab will detect all the games installed on your system. It will detect them from Steam, Origin, Uplay. Uh, the only time uh, it doesn't detect is GOG Galaxy games yet, but you can manually add them with this uh, little add function here. Uh, under the global settings, you can adjust multiple image uh, qualities. This is where you can also enable global graphics for uh, frame rate target control, which will be applied throughout the board. So what this will allow you to do is set a frame rate target for a specific game, anywhere from 30 FPS to 200 FPS, that would allow your GPU to work only up to a certain point. So for example, if you have a Fury X and you want to play a less demanding title, you can set a frame rate target so that your GPU can run run uh, at a much higher efficiency, uh, lower temperatures and lower fan noise in order to reach that specific target. And you can also see shader cache here that can be enabled or disabled. So in order to offer seamless transition between areas of open world games like Far Cry 4, Fallout 4, Dragon Age and you know, Skyrim and all those stuff. The game engine has to uh, store compiled shaders within the dr graphics driver. And it becomes very inefficient when you have to revisit that area of the game again, as it has to uh, compile the shaders, has to load them and has to discard them once again. So what, they, what AMD Crimson will try to do is redirect those compiled shaders onto the area of the user's disk, so a hard drive or an SSD, in order to offer much reduced loading times in games uh, and therefore may potentially reduce CPU overhead and uh, you, so the CPU doesn't have to uh, worry about those resources. The global overdrive it hasn't changed at all. It's uh, still the same way. You cannot adjust voltages and it's very easy to see, visually see what type of overclock uh, and power limit percentage that you will be working with if you want to overclock. But the cool thing is you can enter each single game and you can adjust the same image controls per game and adjust the frame rate target control per title, which is really cool. Uh, and you can also set different profiles, overclocking profiles per game as well, which is nice if you want to have a little extra power in one and less on the other. So moving on to the video tab, this is where you have uh, local playback color presets for anything that's playing locally. So these presets will not apply to the video playing on the web. So these uh, color profiles are not specific to anything that's playing on YouTube or anything like that. But as you can see here, I have a file. Right now it's in default. If you go in Cinema Classic, notice that it does change the color profile and color preset of that uh, video. 
Moving on to the display tab here, I was hoping to see, you know, at least uh, commands for resolution and refresh rate and all that jazz that you'd, you'd like to see under the display settings. Unfortunately, that's not available here. You do, however, can enable free sync. Uh, virtual super resolution, GPU scaling, and the scaling mode, all of which are important, but you will have to go into additional settings, which is right here. So clicking that will pop up uh, this window that we're so familiar with, uh, in which you can see the model, the GPU, uh, the monitor, resolution, refresh rate, and all that stuff. And you can go into custom resolutions here if you want to change the refresh rate or custom resolutions uh, of this panel. Now, AMD Crimson brings multi-monitor setups a lot easier. I don't have triple monitor setup or multi-monitor setup, but in here you'll be able to adjust uh, where each panel is and, and how it is aligned. And it's supposed to bring uh, multi-monitor configuration setups a lot easier to set up now with AMD Crimson. And finally, the system tab gives you all the software and hardware information about your system that you know is great to have in case you want to double check on something that is is whether or not it's updated or something being detected. And so the last thing to cover is performance and throughout our, our tests, only two games saw good improvements, Fallout 4 and Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, while on the other hand, Hitman and Shadow of Mordor saw a large decline in performance with the rest of the titles hovering around the margin of error. So I think it'll be just a matter of time until we see uh, performance improvements across the board with AMD Crimson versus previous Catalyst software. In our 30 hours of testing with four GPUs, we've experienced no abnormal abnormal uh, behavior with the GPU, while some people have reported to have uh, low fan profiles, so GPU fan profiles to be way too low, the cards would get hot uh, with this driver software, but not in our experience. And so at the end of the day, what AMD has uh, here is a solid software foundation that will definitely be complementing their future hardware with beautiful UI and hopefully further refinements uh, in how we interact with the driver. And if you want more information on AMD Crimson, it will be linked in the description below. We have a full article on hardwarecanox.com. Make sure to give uh, the like button a virtual high five on your way out uh, so that we can feel appreciated. We hope you enjoyed this little overview video. I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.